Greetings. Uh, once again, welcome to my channel. We are Flamingo. We are going to look at the topic in chemistry. Radioactivity or nuclear chemistry. So to speak. But before we do, always remember to subscribe. Don't forget that. And you can interact with us at the comment section. So without wasting much time, let's go. Now, nuclear chemistry. That's a chemistry topic for pure chemistry students. Now, what is radioactivity? Now, let's look at the concept of radioactivity. It's a radioactivity is a process whereby a nucleus disintegrates into another nucleus with the emission of radiations and energy. So, radioactivity and nucleus disintegrates into another, right? By emitting radiations and energy. That's what we call radioactivity. Now, to understand this, let's look at the two types of radioactivity that we have. We have the natural radioactivity. Now, it is a spontaneous. Now, when I say spontaneous, we mean feasible. A spontaneous reaction is a reaction which can proceed without energy being fed to it. For example, when you light a fire, a fire for cooking, you know that we normally fan the fire in our part in Africa here, right? You fan. Now, when you are supplying air to the fire, you are supplying energy. That reaction is not spontaneous. A spontaneous reaction, once it starts, it can complete or it can go on without any energy being fed to it, right? So natural radioactivity is a spontaneous disintegration of the nucleus of a heavier radioactive nuclei, normally unstable nucleus, right, into another nucleus. Now, with the emission of radiations. Now, there is an example, typical example for natural radioactivity. That is uranium. It breaks down to form thorium and releases alpha particle. This is a radiation. Now, how will I tell what that is? A natural radioactivity equation. How will I know? Now, in natural radioactivity, right, on the left, you always see the unstable nucleus. You don't see anything attached to it, as you see for artificial here. No. Just this, which breaks to form thorium and this. That is it. But look at artificial. Aluminium is a stable element. It cannot disintegrate unless you force it. That is why we say we bombard. You do force breaking. So you expect to see something attached to aluminium before the arrow. So that is how to differentiate between natural equations and artificial equations. I hope you're okay. So now let's look at artificial radioactivity. It is a disintegration of a nucleus of a lighter element, stable, into another nucleus after it has been bombarded by subatomic particles. Good. Aluminium is stable. Aluminium can never disintegrate. Uranium is unstable. It can disintegrate on its own. Are you okay? So you have to bombard using subatomic particles, the protons and neutrons and that, right? So we say I added a neutron to it. There's a mass, there is a whatever, the representation of a neutron, that is it. So you see, I formed this and I release alpha particle. Good. So if you see equations with direct, that is the reactant straight in the left direct arrow, that is natural. Now something added to it before the arrow, that's artificial because you have to force break. I hope you are getting it. That is why natural is defined as well spontaneous, feasible. It can go on without any energy, energy being fed to it, right? That is it. Now let's look at the types of radiations that we have. We have what we call the alpha radiations. And alpha radiations, what is their nature? They are ionized helium atoms. So if you have not seen alpha particle before, there is helium. But there is ionized helium nucleus. You see, ionized. So alpha particles look like this. If I've ever seen a beta particle before, it is just like an electron. Okay? Now, gamma, as you can see, no charge. So alpha particle, you can have plus two here as a charge. You see that? So they are ionized helium atoms. That is alpha particle, right? Ionized helium atoms. Or this. Or you can have this. That is alpha particle, right? Ionized helium atom. That is alpha particle. Good. And beta radiations are also fast moving electrons. Good. Gamma rays are electromagnetic radiations. Okay? So these are the three radiations that we release during radioactivity. Uh, so, 
uh, if you go to your books, you see that we have their nature, as you see, and we have their penetrating power, their penetrating ability. Now, what do we mean by that? So, alpha particle, right? Look at the mass, look at the charge. Its penetrating power is low. Now, beta particle is much better than alpha particle in terms of penetrating power. Now, what about gamma? Very high penetrating power. So, no mass, that's no mass, right? Very high penetrating power. Now, you also look at mm -hmm. their nature, the masses, okay, and their properties in the electric and the magnetic field. That is for them. When you pick alpha particles, right, in the electric and magnetic field, they are affected because they are charged. You see, in electric and magnetic field, we have charges. So once you have charge, you will repel or attracted, right? So they are affected. Now, when you go to beta radiations, they are also affected. But they move to the positive plate, right? Because they are negative in nature. And this also move to the negative plate. Now, what about gamma radiations? Gamma radiations in electric and magnetic form, what do you think? They are unaffected. Why? They have no charge. So you have a charge of plus two. You will be deflected to the negative plate. A beta particle of minus one will be deflected to the positive plate. Gamma radiations will be unaffected. Why? They contain no charges, right? So that is it. So we are welcome to balancing nuclear equations, right? So we have a sample question, and that is the reference. Now write balance equation for the capture of a neutron by Nitrogen, the mass number four is in atomic number seven to form this three H hydrogen, right? So, right balance equation It's a nuclear equation, right? Not chemical. So, let's write the equation. So, I have 14 seven and nitrogen by they say a capture of a neutron by this. So, this one captured what a neutron. You have no representation of the subatomic particles, right? It's very important here. It even tells you that it is an artificial relativity law. So I found this. Now, how do you know whether you are right? The total masses here is 15. This is the right. It means something is what? Missing. I can call here A and call here B, right? So I have to look for that and balance it. So, from the principle of conservation, from the principle of conservation of mass numbers, it follows that 14 plus 1 equals 3 plus 8. So this arrow is tantamount to an equal to, right? So there is 15 equals 3 plus 8. So you have 15 minus 3 equals 8. 12 equals A. So I have A, right? Good. Now let's look at B. So from the principle of conservation of atomic numbers, right? So comparing atomic numbers, we have 7 plus 0 equals 1 plus B. So there is 7 minus 1 equals B. There is 6 equals B. So X happens to be 12, 6. Now which element is this? That is carbon. How do you know that? Yeah. Carbon. Now let's balance the equation as required. So this as a neutron. This plus 12 says carbon. It is what we call balance. Let's check. The total mass is here. We have 15. The total mass is here is 15. Total atomic number is 7. Total 7. Balanced. Okay, let's look at the second question. A proton by capture by this, right? So, boron captures a proton. We have no representation of the subatomic particles, right? Very important. To form an alpha particle, there is how an alpha particle looks like. Now let's check this 11 plus 1, 12. Something is missing, right? Good. So let's see. So let's check 
conservation of our mass numbers, 